If anyone has a fetish for refreshes, it is EA. The Sims 4 seems to be getting refreshed in one way or another every so often, and this is because The Sims 4 has an identity crisis. Even during development, it had an identity crisis, going from being a cross-platform online multiplayer Sims title to being what it is today. For all the new Sims 4 players out there, by the way, did you know the game didn't even launch with toddlers, ghosts, swimming pools, along with literally tons of other fundamental base game things? Eight years on, EA EA is still playing catch up, adding tons of features such as the recently released Infants update, all in order to make The Sims 4 feel something unique. Having said that, I can't help but think, what actually is The Sims 4 and what did it even add to the series to make the game better? The Sims 1 was the first ever proper life simulation game to ever exist, so that was the starting point. And then The Sims 2 innovated by adding a complex social system as well as updated 3D visuals and more customization than ever before. The Sims 3 innovated by adding open worlds with no loading screens and the most ambitious packs we've ever seen. But what did The Sims 4 actually add other than catch-up features? And what I mean by catch-up features is stuff that was supposed to be in the base game on launch but wasn't. The question is of course rhetorical because there is no answer. Yes, you could be a sassy know-it-all and be like, well, Satch, technically The Sims 4 added the gallery. It has better build tools, it has better graphics. <laughs> I just feel like these things are more of a general improvement that you would see in any game over time, no matter what that game is, rather than defining features that make The Sims 4 feel special. As every Sims game has had better graphics from the last, they've all had better build tools from the last, better online features and sharing features. It makes me wonder what The Sims 5 will actually be like and what it needs to make it realistically better than any of the previous titles. An emphasis on realistically better because as we know The Sims has always been quite taxing on people's PC hardware and seeming most players play on laptops these days and EA have already stated The Sims 5 will be cross-platform compatible with mobile we need to actually think what could realistically be done to make The Sims 5 an actually defining game in the series and not just a sidestep or backward step like The Sims 4 was. The development of The Sims 5 has been very much undercover with not much info coming out about it, but it has been suggested that the mobile play may just be limited to building things or creating sims, not actual gameplay, and I'm really, really, really hoping this is the case. I do not want the full game to be available on mobile. I think that would be an absolute disaster. It takes a concept of an iPad kid to a whole new level. Like, I just don't see it happening. I really don't. But not all mobile games are necessarily bad. I play Genshin Impact on PC and mobile, and the mobile our game is literally just as good as a PC game. You can literally do everything on both platforms and it's a very big and very ambitious game. So who knows, maybe The Sims 5 could work on mobile. Anyway, we all know we want open worlds back. I think if EA doesn't, like it would genuinely be a disaster. Like I know The Sims series has undergone a lot of disaster since The Sims 4, but like if The Sims 5 had another close lot system, it would honestly be horrific and I think it would be the end of The Sims forever, 100%. I think honestly a great compromise would to be to have an open neighborhood system kind of like the sims 4 now where you load into a lot and it loads also the surrounding area outside it but the issue with the sims 4 is even though the other lots in that neighborhood are also loaded they're not technically loaded at the same time and you can't enter them i think the sims 5 needs to have this system where you have a smaller neighborhood and there's loads of stuff going on around the neighborhood with the local people who live in the neighborhood neighborhood and you can go and visit somebody else's house and that area itself is open. I personally feel like that would be a great compromise. That way it keeps it fun for people who have, you know, great hardware but also lower hardware. As a competitor to The Sims 4, Life by You is set to release with a fully open world, the first of which to exist since The Sims 3. So the fact that one is being developed currently by a major video gaming publisher, we know it's something that could also be possible in The Sims 5, which is an even bigger bigger publisher than Paradox. So if they can do it, I'm sure EA can do it too. And keeping it just an open neighborhood, I think could breed a lot of new possibilities, even new things that we didn't see in The Sims 3 that would make The Sims 5 so defining. Yes, in The Sims 3, you could click on literally any lot in the world and see Sims doing something. But the problem was they weren't really smart enough to know what they were doing and why. Like you click on a random house and a Sim would be painting, but like, why are they painting? It's just like a randomly 
generated interaction they're doing in their house. But with The Sims 5, I think they could take it a step further and actually make Sims smart enough to know what they're doing and why. A Sim with a certain personality type could be doing something specific. A control size neighborhood in The Sims 5 could allow for greater processing power to allow townies to live real lives behind the scenes. Go to work, buy food if they've ran out of food, eat meals at regular times, buy new clothes and actually start wearing them, get fired from a job and find a new job, getting married and moving out with your partner. We do have story progression technically in The Sims 4 but it is implemented horrifically and it is the most immersion breaking thing in the world. The Sims 4's initial marketing was all about how Sims are smarter than ever before but of course when we all started playing the game we found out that simply just wasn't true. Instead they could just multitask which is nice but not necessarily smarter in the ambitious sense that The Sims 5 could be. Going from The Sims 3's open world system to The Sims 4's closed lot system, I think an in-between where you can have an alive neighborhood would be a great place to be in The Sims 5. The Sims 4 has always felt rather lonely to me in that you're just so stuck inside a specific lot you forget there's a whole world around you. And despite having some really beautiful worlds in the game, none of us ever really explore the areas in The Sims 4's many worlds and that's because there's simply nothing to do in them. A Sims 5 where you can actually do things in the world and interact with other sims would definitely take it away from being an isolated dollhouse experience to an open world life experience which I think would be so exciting. And on the subject of going to shops and buying things I really really think The Sims 5 needs to bring that level of realism back. It honestly makes me rage that in The Sims 4 you can just have any outfit at any time like in previous sims games you'd have the one outfit that you had in Cass and then if you wanted any more clothes you'd actually have to go to the clothes shop to get them. Whereas in The Sims 4 you magically own every single item of clothing from your wardrobe like it just doesn't make any sense. The Sims 2 and 3 also had retail systems so if you needed groceries you actually had to go to the shop to get them. Of course you can technically do that in The Sims 4 but that requires you to get the cottage living expansion pack and then apply a special lot tray and you can only buy food from one market store in Henford upon Bagley. So it's not really the same. Actually having to buy things from a shop is such a small thing I know but I also know that simmers really want that because we love the mundane side of the sims. That's why packs like laundry day and growing together in parenthood are the most popular ones because simmers love doing boring household chores. That's what's made the sims fun in every single sims game. I just think simply having an open world or at least open neighborhood can facilitate so many unique ideas such as the ones discussed but also many more but I think it's all meaningless unless the sims 5 comes with creatable worlds. The Sims 3's create a world tool was amazing. I had to go at it once for a YouTube video. It went horrifically. <laughs> it did have many flaws. Like it was also a nightmare to download them because some required CC. Others required packs you didn't own. But not just creating a world, but actually the default worlds where you could literally just place a lot down anywhere of any size and build on it. You can move anything around in game. It was so customizable. Being able to do that in an open neighborhood system rather than an open world system in the Sims 5 I think would be great because it would not be overwhelming. It would be small enough to make it so that it's bearable and easy for anybody to do but also creative enough to be able to do what you want at the same time. The Sims 4's way of having to purchase a brand new official expansion pack or game pack in order to get a new world just feels a bit cash grabby to me and I really think the formula needs to go back to its roots for The Sims 5. And that leads me on to my next point which is cash grabbiness. The DLC system for the sims 4 is a total mess. The sims has always been very cash grabby but what was once one pack in the sims 3 is now a billion different packs in the sims 4 to achieve the same gameplay result. The upcoming horses pack for the sims 4 leaked recently has honestly made me laugh so much because in order to achieve the sims 3 pets pack experience you must first get the sims 4 cats and dogs expansion pack and then you have to get the expansion pack for the cats and dogs expansion pack which is called the My First Pet Stuff Stuff Pack, which should have been called My Second Pet Stuff. And then you need the Cottage Living
living expansion pack, which may as well have been called My Third Pet Stuff. And now we have The Sims for My Fourth Pet Stuff, known as the Upcoming Horses Pack. What was once one expansion pack in The Sims 3 is now going to be three expansion packs plus one stuff pack in The Sims 4, which is crazy. I've always thought it's a bit weird how Simmers are so like loyal to EA. EA continues to exploit players with its cash grabby DLC models, but you all continue to lick EA's unbleached arse and buy them all anyway. <laughs> I mean, I do the same so I can hardly talk, but it's just weird to me, you know, the excitement over packs that are really not that exciting. Like, especially with the recent kits coming out, like, like you know, we see the new kits coming out, like the Greenhouse Haven kit, and I see Simmers talk about it like, oh my god, we got new window panes. This is amazing. Like, what do you mean new fucking window panes? <laughs> this is a life simulation game. Like, is the bar that low? We're getting excited over like new window swatches. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully with the release of upcoming life simulation games like Paralives or Life by You or any other potential future life simulation game, it'll scare EA into being more moral because clearly simmers are not scary enough. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. I'm sorry. EA have suggested that online features may be more prevalent in The Sims 5, being able to share your own custom builds, etc. And I just can't see it working unless EA adopts a much more inclusive pack system and not such an isolated system. Even The Sims 4 Gallery, like you genuinely can't download anything off it because even eight years on, there's still not a filter to filter out builds and households which don't contain stuff from packs that you don't own. It's crazy to me that you can't just filter through things that contain creations from packs only you own. Like that seems so fundamental and obvious, but they haven't done it. With that being said, I do think The Sims 5 needs to adopt a completely different DLC model. I think the reason why The Sims 4 is such a mess is because they just kind of made up the DLC as they were going along. I think that's the main reason why every single Sims game has always ended up in a glitchy mess, always near the end of its lifespan. The Sims 3 was no exception either. And I think the problem is they just make up the DLC as they go along and it just becomes, you know, a little spaghetti coded nightmare. And I just feel like with The Sims 5, they need to approach the game very differently. The Sims 4's mess of having a confusing pack system, like, you know, growing together in parenthood, both of which basically have the exact same theme, but features the split between them in ways. It just doesn't make any sense. And I just feel like The Sims 5 needs to be a lot more organized with its DLC because it will have DLC. EA will most definitely not turn The Sims 4 into a game. It will always be a base game with DLC. I just hope that they approach it very differently and more systematically so the game will actually work in the long term. Not just for the players, but for themselves as well. I honestly can't imagine how much money EA is spending on like game testers and fixing and things, fixing the game. Well, I do know they're spending absolutely nothing because the game never gets fixed. And when they do try and fix, it gets more broken. <laughs> I'm not a fat old billionaire sugar daddy in a penguin suit. So I don't know how a DLC model could work that could balance between EA making money versus players actually having a good time. But even though I don't know how it could be implemented, I know at least how it should be implemented or at least should not be implemented. The DLC for a game like The Sims, in my opinion, should always be very niche and specific to certain kinds of players. You know, in The Sims 4, all of the different occult packs exist for those who want something very different to the standard life simulation gameplay. These are so specific and unique, it makes sense to make them DLC. The same could be said for a pack like Jungle Adventure. Exploring tombs is a very niche thing to do and it exists for those who want to do it. Packs like the Seasons pack, however, a pack that literally just gives us weather or a pack like Growing Together, which literally just gives us updated coding for social interactions. On the other hand, merely feel like base game overhauls and I think EA would be wise to include these features in The Sims 5's base game. As I said before, in a perfect world, The Sims 5 would be a game, not a base game, but this is EA. They are insufferably exploitive, <laughs> so we have to be somewhat realistic. And I feel like giving us a pack like Seasons and Growing Together and Parenthood into The Sims 5's base game is somewhat realistic. You guys let me know what you think because I honestly don't know how The Sims 5 could adopt a DLC model that makes EA feel like they're exploiting us because let's be honest, they love to do that, but at the same time make us feel like we genuinely enjoy the game. What can they do to please the players but also the shareholders at the same time. You guys let me know how you think it could work. Totally changing up how your game works, especially the DLC model, I think is very scary, especially where there are shareholders concerned, like being real, but it's not always a bad thing. Every
every single Zelda fan was terrified when Breath of the Wild was first announced and that's because it deviated so much from the traditional Zelda formula. But now both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have come out. They have come to be two of the best games of all time thanks to Nintendo not being afraid to move on and do something different. I know it's really vague of me to say oh EA should do something different with The Sims 5 and that's honestly like just because I'm not creative or innovative enough to really think about what they could actually do in detail. Specifically something that will be massively different from his predecessors. All I know is that Simmers have had ingrained in them for a very long time what a life simulation game should be because The Sims has always dominated the market and EA have followed the exact same formula every single time. But I really want The Sims 5's formula to be different. But ironically, in many ways, I think it could be different by really just going back to basics and going back to what a life simulation should be at its core. You know, every morning when I make my coffee, I get those instant coffees that are like flavored. And you know, some mornings I'll have a caramel one, other mornings I'll have a hazelnut one. But like, do you know what? Recently, I think like, I just want like a normal bland coffee, just like a black coffee, no flavoring. Like sometimes I like just going back to basics with my coffee. And I feel like the same thing is happening with The Sims 4. Like there's so many crazy flavors of The Sims right now. Like I just want a normal plain Sims. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, once I had an obsession with sweet potatoes and not like I was eating sweet potato fries, mashed sweet potato, roasted sweet potato. But like I got so sick of sweet potato. Like now I just love like a plain old normal potato. <laughs> That's a bit of a tangent, but you know the metaphor I'm getting at. You understand what I mean? The Sims 4's identity crisis has sparked a lot of debate over the recent years of what The Sims actually is, but more importantly, what it could be in the future. With such an unbearably huge array of DLC, most Simmers I know find themselves sticking to doing all the same basic things over and over again, like getting a house, having a family, cleaning the house, getting a job. These are the things that Sims players love, not bowling alley DLC or perfect patio DLC or the water slides DLC, whatever that was called. People just like the mundane things. And fundamentally, a perfect Sims 5, in my eyes anyway, is a Sims 5 that focuses on expanding the normal sides of life, giving them complexity in ways that we've never seen before. And I truly think that's how The Sims 5 will stand out as a sequel to The Sims 3. And yes, I say sequel to The Sims 3 because The Sims 4 was not a sequel to The Sims 3. The Sims 4 was a sidestep. It wasn't even a sidestep. It was a backwards step spin-off. Who the fuck knows what it was? <laughs> I don't even think EA knows. Simmers don't even know. Nobody knows. I think we just need to pretend The Sims 4 didn't exist and see The Sims 5 as like a sequel to The Sims 3. That's honestly the best way I think we can look at it. And I haven't mentioned cars because that is honestly an obvious one. If the cars don't come in The Sims 5, I'm rioting. But what like new things do you want in The Sims 5? Because everyone says, oh, I want open worlds. I want cars. Is there anything that people actually haven't mentioned that feels like a core thing for The Sims 5 base game you think should exist? Something that we haven't seen before. I'm genuinely curious what you think. Also, if you're curious about the other two upcoming life sim games, Paralives and Life by You, I've got a couple of videos on those games here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.